Right, uh, welcome back. Uh, Joe here from Data Analytics Ireland. Today we're going to talk about how to pass Python variables over to JavaScript, which will populate a drop down menu in a web browser. So we have a number of variables here, as you can see in the pop down, or drop down, should I say. But uh, what I'm going to show you is how to populate them from here in Python to a, a JavaScript, which is part of a, a HTML file, and then basically load the HTML file and basically show it in the, the drop down menu. So there's two bits to this, essentially. There is the app.py, which is the Python file, okay? And then separately, there is an anything called the index.html. All right, so essentially what both of them serve two different purposes. We'll go through them now to now what they do. But essentially, uh, we're going to be starting off here using Flask again. So in a previous video where I actually passed some JavaScript to Python, we use Flask. And the idea about using Flask is Flask actually is the Python library that allows you to basically populate or create, sorry, web browser applications. And then you can basically create websites and everything using Flask and use the functionality of Python. So from here, we're basically importing um, Flask and basically then we're gonna render the template, which I'll show you now in a second what that all means. Um, and basically, this is kind of like your root here. Okay, and basically, this is basically when the HTML file is looking to load in or anything that's basically in the Python side, there's different um, different points that you can tell it where to look. So I could change that to forward slash name, for example, and that's that could be another part of the code that goes to that piece of logic and then pulled in the data or runs the function, whatever, from there. So in within this anyway, we have def index and we have two things, right? So this is what we're here for, right? This is a list of created with a node of names. And what we want to do is pass that over when the website loads, sorry, when the website loads, creates a drop down menu and passes in these values. And then basically um, you can pick and choose them as you, as you please. So that's very straightforward. We have a name here uh, and a list and then list of names, okay? And then as part of this function, um, it basically returns around a template in XHTML. Now, as in the other video I described at the start, the logic behind this is essentially that we have a templates folder here and, it's, and index HTML is stored in there. And the whole idea is that when the Flask, when we run this application and the Flask basically opens up and the browser creates, it goes over to the templates file and finds this file here, which this here now, we'll look at this in a second, and basically loads it into the browser and then any functionality that's in that index.html file is loaded in. All right, so that's the first step. So when we're running this, actually, we run it from here. And the reason we run it from here is what it does is it then loads and runs all the logic, it builds the web browser page to allow index.html to be loaded, and then passes over any of the data here or any of the logic or anything that the web browser or the index.html data is looking for. So if you run it from here in the index.html, it won't find this data because the the logic hasn't loaded up this first pass it over. So essentially, if you run it from index HTML, it, there's nothing there. It's as if it's empty. There's it's it's not finding anything because it's it hasn't run the app.py first to give you all the data you need. Right. So that's the first step. Okay. So anytime you do this, this is there's two bits to it as I said. There's the app.py and the index HTML. And remember that you have a templates file here folder should I say so you could have more than one in a HTML file um, so that's how you would build a website you would have multiple HTML files here and then through that you have different parts of the logic over here you would reference it back here and as I said this is the the base index but you could change that to home you could change that to contact you know anything you want logins so on and so forth and all the logic would be contained in here and run from that logic so the second bit of this is then the main bit of the line, the main bit of the code here, and this is actually how the website, uh, when the index HTML is loaded, it loads all this logic in this JavaScript, and then it populates it. <coughs> so I won't go through all of this. This is basically all the basic HTML um, tags that are part of any web web browser page built in HTML, and this is what it loads as a default. So the most obvious one here is pass Python variable script. So that was just the title of the page that you'll see coming in. So the first thing we want to do is, in the body, 
So you have the body tag here and that's open and closed here, right? What we want to do is basically uh, create a drop down list. So to create a drop down um, list, um, which is unpopulated at the start, is essentially what we do is go, we have a run and select, and then basically we give it an ID. And the importance of the ID is that when we run the JavaScript later on, you'll see now in a second, it, it references an ID of this. So it knows to the data that we're gonna pass in, it says, oh, hold on, we're gonna pass it into this drop down, drop in, drop down with an ID of selected value. So that's important. So very important that if you don't give it an ID, that when you run the JavaScript, it doesn't know where to put it because it's looking for an ID to populate into. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, so that's the open and close tag. Then we're all going, this is the first, this is our main bit of JavaScript that basically will do what we were here to learn in this video. So basically open the script as normal. I just comped this out, but I've just left this in here. This is actually what we're passing over. This is what you're expecting to see. This is the values here. Okay, all these values here. It doesn't, it absolutely serves no purpose rather than it's just there for reference. So there's nothing for you to do on it. So the first thing we want to do is we are creating um, a variable here, a JavaScript variable called selected value. And it's basically saying, go off and find the select value. <clears throat> and basically what we're going to do then is attach into that a, a variable called test, which is name. And basically, it's it's a JSON. It's a JSON. Um, it's a JSON. Basically, file, not the file, but JSON format, should I say? Now, important thing here to remember, um, that this name here, uh, when we go back, when the the website opens, when this is why we ran it from here, when the website opens and runs, then it's the actual name here is the list. It's referencing the name list in the Python side. So this name here, this bit of logic here, is referencing the list name called name here in python and then it says oh, and then it will know it will the next steps down further it will bring in these values so that's important so if you don't have if you had that wrong and you had the uh, spelt wrong or totally different name to it basically it wouldn't work because it can't find that value uh, over here okay so that's what that line does then what we're going to do um is we're just literally for test it's basically, so the first put line here is basically found select value. Um, and it says, we're gonna populate it with tests. Okay, and the test has a value of name. Uh, as we know, the name comes from Pyth the Python side and it has these values. What this line, next line is doing is gonna loop through the test and find the length. So it's essentially what it's doing, it goes into name and it, it finds each, each individual value and it counts it. So it basically, when we do the logic down below then, it knows, for instance, whatever you have five or six values it's going to populate in. When it gets to the last one, then it knows it's at the end. Okay, so that's all that line is doing. Then what we're going to do um, is we're basically now getting into the meat, meat and bones of this. Is essentially what we're going to do is we are going to create a, a, a basically a variable here called selection. And all the selection is doing is creating a variable to store the values that come in from test. That's all it's doing. Okay, and then what we're going to do is create another variable or another variable here is called, and we're going to call it uh, text. And this basically just reads in each value basically from the test here. Okay, so this one basically uh, is saying where this is the, the variable that's going to store stored information. This actually bit basically uh, reads loops through basically the test and finds these value. And then what it's doing here in the next line is basically every time it finds something in text, it just appends it in here to selection. Okay. So remember we created the selection up here. Now it's actually appending values in. The next line here is basically um, this is the line sets each value read in as a value for the drop down. Yeah. So essentially we've loaded in the values here, but now what we're telling it to basically do is actually that these are the values we're going to use as the drop down okay so all that all that's doing now is we have basically stored all those values and we're going to make that available to the next line to basically then populate it the drop down okay so the last line is selected value basically insert before the selection so whatever values here and then select value as the last so this basically again reads each so i'm gonna correct my spelling mistake sorry 
Um, basically all it's going to do is it's going to read each value in and then store it and then basically now this is the this is what would be used as part of the um part of the drop down so when i run this now so remember i was going to run saying run this so when i run this it's important i'm going to run it from here okay so what i'll do is actually i'll just close this for a second just let's rerun this okay so that's the Python script run on there now. So what it's done basically uh, is created the Flask app. And then what it does is it's basically running on the, it, for the purposes of this, it just basically is running on a local, a local IP address here on my computer. But as you can see, what it's done is it's created a lot, put in the values there. I can go and select any of them I want and it's created the drop down. Okay. So essentially, that in a nutshell, let's go back over here. So that essentially today, that in a nutshell, is how you will quite easily and very quickly pass um, uh, values or a list of values or a value on Python over in the JavaScript. And then once it's in the JavaScript and you can basically do what you want, you can pass it to the variables, put it into drop down lists as I want, create a pop-up pop -up message to say that the value has been passed, you're basically you have the data in and that's how quickly you can do it uh very very uh, very powerful and very very easy and very quick way to pass data between python and javascript so i hope you joined that today uh plenty more videos coming i've uh, been quite busy over the last while so apologies it's been a little bit late coming out but i have a couple of people contact me on the website looking for more uh, videos and different types of videos so i'm going through them now this is the first one of them um so hope you enjoyed it i hope you keep yourself safe catch you soon and take care bye bye